Welcome to Kraken Baseball, Kerensky Baseball League. It's the final game of our four-game series to start off against the Cloud Cobras. Case and Hernandez in the lineup tonight, giving Orbit Painter the uh, struggling leadoff hitter a day off. And here he is to lead off. Hernandez had just one at bat this season. Facing TD, TD Tran. Fly ball into foul territory, and Hernandez is out. Brings up Corbin Hansen. He's coming off a day off in which Riker Farrell got a time at second base. And uh, we'll see what he can do here. And that's a good base hit to open it up here for Corbin Hansen in his return to the lineup. Next up, we got Atlas Roach. Uh, pretty productive season so far. 364 batting average. No home runs. No RBIs yet. Uh, hopefully he'll do that. Uh... We said this a couple times, Atlas Roach, really weird three-hitter with the the lack of RBI production because he's got an RBI dud. But he'll take a four-pitch walk from Tran, who looks absolutely stunned. Brings up Swell McLean. Hitting fourth in the lineup, playing center field today. Taking a painter's spot. Defensively, and a big hit there. Hansen's going to go home. And score. We're on the board early here. Kraken's up 1-0. Rowan Hancock off to a great start. Due for a day off. Anytime now. And he puts one into left field as well. And the run around. They uh, send Atlas Rocho. 2-0 here early. Kraken's looking good. Bunny Bartlett at the plate. Six RBIs on the season for Bartlett. Keep in mind, we're only in game four here. Two and one record. Tran is tense. Ball two. Checking on McLean. And he stands to deliver. And that is ball three. Oh, boy. And just catches the corner there. Three one. And another walk loads the bases for Emmett Whitney. Whitney, one home run this season, three RBIs, hitting a very solid 308. A chance to add to that RBI total here. Fouled off. 1-1. One, one. And that will be out number two. So two harmless fly balls into foul territory, but otherwise a really struggling moment here. Coraline Cherry on deck is the pitcher. Henley Schmid. And Verona Richards will make the play at first base and end the inning. But two quick runs to open it up. Thea Preline, Veranda Richards, and Mark Veeman do up for the Cloud Cobras. Henley Shid on the hill. Um, not a particularly amazing pitcher. Has some velocity, some junk, some accuracy. But uh, not a bad fourth pitcher. And Rowan Hancock and Emmett Whitney are unable to get to that one. 2-2. Two, two. To Thea Preline. And it goes under Emmett Whitney at third base and into left field. One on for Veranda Richards. Been pretty productive so far. 333. One home run, two RBIs. It's been a low-scoring offense from the uh from the Cobras so far this season. And that one is going to drop in front of Case and Hernandez as well. So problems here early for Schmidt, uh, for both starting pitchers. Mark Veenman steps up. He has struggled so far, hitting just 100. But he is, at the same time, a very dangerous hitter. A lot of power in Veenman. And he's got that RBI uh, uh, man trait as well. But he'll sit down. Henley Shid continues to do, uh, continues his problems. Turf Beal, or Turf, it is Turf Beal. Ball one. From Henley Shid. And strike one on the foul ball. And then a rounder into left field. Kaysen Hernandez had a busy, a busy day, um, but not in a good way. Largely, it's just been him looking at things landing. Carson Tucker, the offensive key cog to this lineup. 
She's got a four seam fastball, slider changeup, and a curveball. Uh, pretty standard fare for a Ospi junk pitcher. And uh, it's been a busy day for the catchers. They've recorded three out of five outs so far. Rowan Hancock makes the play. Cooper Potts back in the lineup after having an off day. And the shit working to him. Both teams have gotten pretty deep into their lineups here in the first inning. And it is a ball two to Ponce. Make it 2 2. And should deliver here. 24th pitch of the inning. Not good for both starters. I think we're going to see some bullpen activity here pretty early. And the hump with a hell of a strikeout dance there. Shid to lead off the inning, followed by Kaysen Hernandez and Corbin Hansen against TD Tran. Shid is actually not a bad hitter. We've got a little bit of contact, a little bit of power. But uh, an easy first out there. Brings up Kaysen Hernandez. Hernandez is really looking to try and make himself into the default fourth outfield option. Uh, kind of in a battle with Prince Longbottom for that role. Uh, this season and the one that wins that battle is going to have a lot more contract security I think Corbin Hansen Hansen has the most bizarre physical structure there the super broad super uh, strong upper arms and shoulders and the small lower body but he pops out to Veenman Navy Shaw Randy Burr TD Tran a shit. But we'll say this for shit. She's got a couple of strikeouts despite the struggling numbers. Gave up three hits in that first inning. But does have two Ks. Hopefully she gets something rolling here with the back third of the order. Right past Atlas Roach and Navy Shaw is aboard. Randy Burr. Yet to record a hit. The catcher. And that will continue as Corbin Hansen shows he's got some hops. TD Tran. Here is the pitcher. He's got good speed. I was about to say, feels like a sack bunt coming on here. And he is indeed laying down that, that bunt, it looks like. One and two from Shid. And he's going to foul out. That's out number two. Brings up Thea Perlene again. Runner in first, two down. Not much of a chance of a stolen base here. Not great speed on. Rowan Hancock is a tough uh, catcher to steal off of. He's got a good arm. That being said, shit is not throwing with any particular heat. 38 pitches at this point. And they are going to try and steal, but the walk comes in for Praline. Brings up Veranda Richards, two on, two out. Shid could really use that fourth strikeout right now. That'll do as well. Pop fly into foul territory. Emmett Whitney has got it. So Atlas Roach, Swell McLean, and Rowan Hancock do up against TD Tron. Surprisingly enough, Tran, uh, a notably lower pitch count right now. Just 26 pitches. Got through that second inning very well after a disastrous first. Where he gave up two runs. Settling in, it seems. And Atlas Roach pops out to the pitcher. A lot of pop-outs today for both pitchers. Swell McLean, first RBI of the season, finally. Hitting a boatload 500 right now. Lines it at Navy Shaw for out number two. That brings up Rowan Hancock. Let's see what Hancock can do here. And he'll put that one past Shaw for a base hit. So a multi-hit game for Rowan Hancock. Bunny Bartlett. Walked first time up. Be a great time for her to break out with maybe a home run. But she's been pretty productive. Batting 300 with six RBIs. Cannot complain about that through three games this season. 
And it's 3-0 from Tran. He doesn't seem very interested in facing Bartlett, who's got a two-walk game going. Emmett Whitney stepping in. Runners on first and second. Not a lot of speed. Hallmark of the Krakens has been a general lack of speed in their lineup. 0-2. And Tran hits Whitney. And for the second time this game, Car Coraline Cherry comes up with the bases juiced. She didn't do anything with it last time. And she will not repeat it this time. Uber Ponce messes up. And that's going to clear the bases, I think, easily. Coraline Cherry going for three. And she's going to be in there. And the 42-year-old delivers with a bases clearing triple. So the pitcher Henley shit. Again, 5 nothing now for the Krakens. They're off to a great start here despite some struggles on the hill. That will end the top of the third inning, though. Mark Veneman, Turf Beal, and Carson Tucker do up against Henley Shid. He's given up four hits, three Ks through two. But a pitch count that's getting worrisome. You can see she's not losing any ratings yet, but it will probably come. And a walk for Mark Veneman. Turk Beal steps in. One for one with a single. And a ball. A lot of struggles with the control right now for Shid. Who goes behind 2-0 after having walked the leadoff hitter. There is a strike. High fly ball. Left center. Hernandez calls off McLean. And makes the play. That'll bring up Carson Tucker. The power hitting left fielder. 0 for 1 today. But a potent two home runs through three games this season. And he sits down. That's a good way to get things going, hit Shid's way. Uber Ponce, who made a poor play in right field last inning. Looks at strike one. And uh, missing with the curveball. One and one. The curveball has not landed terribly well for Shid so far. And uh, missing up high, I believe, with the four-seam fastball that time. Fouled off by Ponce, two and two still. And a pop out, that will make the screen, I think, and another foul ball. So Ponce, looking at his seventh pitch before striking out. They'll take a long at bat like that, even if it ends in a strikeout, I think. Case and Hernandez, Corbin Hanson, Atlas Roach do up. Like Hernandez is actually one of the few batters not to have gotten on base today. And that will continue as he puts one back into the glove of Tran. Corbin Hansen steps in. One for two. Single back in the first inning. High fly ball into left field. And that will be brought in by Tucker. Atlas Roach. Walk and then uh, retired. See what he can do here. A lot of junk still on trans pitches. Not exactly a lot of velocity. Five hits, three walks. And a high fly ball into center field. Turf Beal calling for it. And he'll make the play. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Still 5 nothing. Navy Shaw, Randy Burr, TD Tran. Do you pinch hit for Tran here if you get a position where Shaw or Burr deliver? I don't know. Depends how much faith they have in the bullpen, I suppose. I think Henley Shit is actually, ironically, in more trouble. A uh, big stretch from Atlas Roach to rob Ran uh, Navy Shaw of a hit there. Randy Burr, the catcher. Grounds to Emmett Whitney at third. And they retire the runner. This brings up TD Tran. Will we see a pinch hitter? No. So Tran is staying in the game. This is the kind of inning that Shid needs, really, to get the, that pitch count under control. 66 pitches here through three and two-third innings is uh, 
Not ideal. Now, man, mind you, a lot of that was in the first. It's been pretty under control since then. Swell McLean, Rowan Hancock, Bunny Bartlett, the heart of the crack and order do up here. They've got a combined three for four with two walks and some RBIs. Swell McLean, one for two. Tran missing. There's strike one on the 81 mile an hour slider. Ground ball, Navy Shaw backhands it and makes the play. Rowan Hancock, two for two with a pair of singles today. Off to a tremendous start. That's a deep fly ball to center field, and that is gone. Six nothing for the Krakens. 503 feet. That is a no-doubter bomb. Third homer of the season for Hancock. He is proving himself to be an MVP candidate right now for this team. Bunny Bartlett has walked twice against Tran. And uh, very inside there. Almost a second hit batter for uh, Tran. Hit Emmett Whitney earlier. 2-2. Two -two. And Bartlett grounds to Veneman. And that is the second out. Brings up Eddie, Emmett Whitney. Speaking of him. Hit by pitch. 0 for 1 otherwise. So we can do here against TD Tran. Tran's only allowed six hits, but unfortunately it's gone for six runs because he's had a hit batsman and three walks on top of that. And Veneman makes the play again. So busy inning for Mark Veneman. But a solo run home run adds to the lead. Thea Preline, Veranda Richards, Mark Veneman do up the top of the order. Single and a walk for Praline so far. Shit is locked in, surprisingly enough. Throwing 92 right now still. So, despite the high pitch count, she's still got something going on for her. And sits down Praline. Veranda Richards. One for two. Dangerous hitter. Ground back to shit. Makes the play. Brings up Mark Veneman. 0 for 1. With a walk. Take strike one from shit. And a ground ball to Corbin Hansen. So second baseman to second baseman. And it'll be Coraline Cherry, Henley Shid, and Kaysen Hernandez. Do up. Coraline Cherry with the tr three run triple. Last time up, one for two. You're in the top of six. Cherry's one of those players that just is absolutely venerable. Uh, in her 40s, still playing. Never been the greatest bat in the world, though. Brings up Henley Shid. Ball one. Shid does feel like that that pitcher is going to have that first home run of the season, if we're being completely honest. Two and one. Three and one. And the full count from Tran walks Henley Shit. It's a bit surprising both starting pitchers are still in the game. They have not had their best outings of the season. Case and Hernandez up. And that one gets off of Navy Shaw and probably will be scored a single. I don't see that being an error. Well, the quick look. Uh, if I could, but apparently I can't. Ball one for Corbin Hansen. Make it ball two. Hansen a chance to drive in his second RBI of the season. And quickly it's a 2-2 count from TT Tron. And unfortunately that will be a pop out to Thea Preline. And that brings up the RBI dud Atlas Roach. Always a weird one. Brooks Corvette entering the game. He has struggled mightily. 2.15 whip with it, or 2.14 whip with an over 11 ERA against the Krakens. And Atlas Roach grounds out to Navy Shaw. So Corvette does get the job done. They get five and two thirds from TD Tron. Turf Beal, Carson Tucker, Uber Ponce do up. Presumably we'll see. Sh uh, presumably we'll see shit. Probably this inning. I don't think we'll see her in the seventh. We'll see. 
is at 75 pitches. I imagine the Krakens have her on a short leash at this point. 2-1 to Beal. 3-1. Does get the count to full. This will be pitch 80. And it's a walk for Turf Beal. Carson Tucker, who has been very long ball dependent, very Adam Dunn-esque this season so far. Talking about this, mind you, this season's very young. This is game four. This is Shid's first game of the season. This was Tran's first start of the season. We're not really established the players yet. One and two to Tucker. And gets one past Coraline Cherry. And uh, into left field for a base hit. So Tucker is aboard. Wouldn't be surprised to see a pinch hitter here for Uber Ponce, though. He has struggled both defensively and offensively in this ballgame and this series. Quickly do a 3 0 count. Atlas Roach has got hops at first base. Absolutely denies uh, Uber Ponce there. Navy Shaw steps in. He's been pretty effective. Let's see how Shid deals with this. Still locked in. Pitch count over 90 now. 92 pitches through five and a third. And that is a, a fortunate foul ball because honestly, that probably is a double play ball if it stays fair. Two and two. Navy Shaw putting up the war here. And another foul. High fly ball. Coraline Cherry will take it. And that is two down. Brings up Randy Burr. Bad time for Burr to be stepping up. Still looking for his first hit of the season. Take strike one. You could strike two. You could see the dropping velocity. That fastball only in the high 80s, but it's a good enough to strike out Randy Burr. Swell McLean, Rowan Hancock, Bunny Bartlett. Do up. Swell McLean can do here. Do hope that the RBIs start coming for Swell at some point. Got her first one today. Hopefully that's just... Opening the bank account. And a four-pitch walk from Brooks Corvette. Now the catcher. Brings up Rowan Hancock. Three for three. Pair of singles and that solo run blast. This is not the type of pitcher you want... Or this is not the type of situation you want to be in if you're Brooks Corvette, who has struggled mightily this season so far. It's a young season, but uh, it's been hard. Hancock... Advances the runner, and that's about the nicest thing I could say about that piece of hitting. Bunny Bartlett. Two walks on the day, 0 for 1. Take strike 1. Runner in scoring position. Bartlett has been very effective with RBI opportunities. Not this time, though. Strikes out. Brings up Emmett Whitney. No hits today. Hit by pitch. Coraline Cherry on deck. Henley shit after that. Two down. You really, even the Krakens, you want Whitney to do something with these pitches, and he really doesn't. Fly ball into right field. Uber Ponce under it. We go to the bottom of seven, still six to nothing. It's a bizarre game because it's seven hits to five, so it, it hasn't really felt like the blowout that the score suggests it would. It is as Saraya success enters from the bench. I'm surprised to see Henley Shit still in the game. Over 100 pitches at this point. Has been effective, don't get me wrong, but it just feels like that pitch count is prohibitive and it's 3-1 to success. Make it a full count. Ground ball to Atlas Roach. He makes the play. Brings up Thea Preline. Newt Pecorino will come into the game off of that. A little surprised they just didn't go to Pecorino right away. But we get the lefty-lefty matchup here against Praline. Pecorino has struggled this season, so kind of the 
Brooks Corvette of the Krakens. ERA over 10, whip nearly 2. Has had a lot of strikeouts, though. And kind of a live or die by the strikeout type pitcher. And Thea Preline puts one through for her second hit of the ball game. One for three, Veranda Richards. She likes things on the inside of the plate. We'll see if uh, see if that is given to her. Kaysen Hernandez and Emmett Whitney giving chase there, but unable to bring that one in. Ground ball. Cherry to Hanson. To Roach. Richards breaks up the double play. We'll give a chance to Mark Veneman. 0 for 2 with a walk. Average is down to under 100. Uh, you got to feel that this is the Cobra's problem. Mark Veneman needs to start actually hitting the ball. Uh, you already have Carson Tucker, who's a guy who's not going to hit for high average. Uh, I don't think you can have Mark Veneman also struggling. Oh, it gets past Will McLean. That will break up the shutout. Miranda Richards motors around and an RBI double for Mark Veneman. Very weird play out in center field. McLean ha looked like she had that ball. And then she didn't. Turf Beal. Locked in. That'll be an RBI right there. A little bloop single to score Veneman. And Newt Pecorino is struggling quite badly. Carson Tucker. Pecorino now tense. ERA has has uh, come up to 15, and there it is. Two-run bomb. This game was looking secure, but Newt Pecorino has not delivered. And Carson Tucker bombs for his third of the season. Brings up Uber Ponce. Pecorino is rattled. I don't know why he's still in the game. Approaching 20 uh, pitches as Ponce singles to center field. Do not know why the Kraken bullpen has not gotten involved. There we are. Warren Middleman into the game. He's tense, but he's been much better. 3.86 ERA, 1.29 whip. The young building block of the future here. And a liner of Coralie Cherry to get the out. Gorgo Palacios entering the game. He's been uh, off to a pretty hot start. We'll see what he can do here against Cherry. Maybe a pinch hitter? Probably not, actually. This is the third pitcher of the night. I suspect they want more than a third of an inning out of uh, Middleman. Palacios has got a lot of velocity. A lot of everything, really. He's got a good lot of movement on that ball. And a base hit for Coraline Cherry. It does bring up Warren Middleman. You could throw down a bunt here. See what happens. And they will do that. Problem is, Coraline Cherry, not a great base runner. And uh, also the bunt right back to the uh, pitcher did not help. Kaysen Hernandez up. He's got good pop in the bat. I feel like this is a guy that the Krakens are looking to make more use of uh, as the season goes on. It's not really a surprise that he's hitting the leadoff spot here. He's got good speed. He's got good pop in the bat. He is that real impressive type of player that might do something. Middleman does a good job of hustling to break up that double play, but Hernandez grounds out. Corbin, Hen uh, Corbin Hansen. Chance to strike back here. 6-4 this ball game. Hansen 1-4 for four on the day. Facing the ultra-tough Palacios, who is a very, very predictable pitcher. Very much a two-pitch guy. Just a four-seam fastball, just a curveball. But you give him an inning, and he's really effective. And he closed the door there. Uh, probably the end of the line for him, though, I think. He's due up second here after Randy Burr. And it will be Warren Middleman to work the eighth. Bunted into a fielder's choice with his uh, at-bat. Still tense. Low velocity pitcher. Gets a strikeout. He's got good movement on that pitch, though. And it will be a pinch hitter, Harold Tirehead, entering the game. It's Tirehead's first bat of the season. Not a particularly great hitter. 
Hops up to the catcher, Rowan Hancock. And it's two down. Thea Preline. Two hits today. Has been very productive. Still a weird leadoff hitter. You know, playing third base, not a traditional leadoff spot. And then you got Veranda Richards hitting after that. So there's some weird things with the Cobras right now. And Kaysen Hernandez makes the play. So it'll be Corbin Tamayo, who is going to be the fourth pitcher of the day, I do believe, for the Kraken, or for the uh, Cobras. He'll face Atlas Roach. Tamayo's had a rough time, as the numbers say. 27 ERA, 5 whip. But the, uh, the right-hander does have a lot of good things going for him. Good velocity, good movement. Just needs to work on the control and the accuracy as Roach draws his second walk of the day. Swell McLean up. This is not the part of the lineup I'd want to bring Tamayo in personally, but uh, it's, the type of, it's the part of the lineup that can really punish a misplaced pitch. Speaking of which, Swell McLean, good contact to the wall. And she's in with a double. Brings up Rowan Hancock with two on. You never want to see Rowan Hancock with two on, I don't think. Home run, two singles tonight. Looking to get to... Yeah, he's already at 10 RBIs. It's pretty insane. Find me a better offensive catcher in the league right now than Rowan Hancock. Three and one. Good contact. Deep fly ball to left. That could be gone. And it is second homer of the day. Rowan Hancock. Tip your hat to the man. Fourth of the season. 13 RBI. Fantastic start. Bunny Bartlett now batting. 9-4. to four. For the Kraken. There was a brief moment there where it looked like the Cobras had a shot in this one. Bunny Bartlett with a good little slash hit. That'll go for two, I think. Uber Ponce has got a good arm. I wouldn't test for third. Alright, so another double. Emmett Whitney stepping in. Trinket Colombo entering. And this is the final bullpen option that the, uh, the Cobras have. Let's see what she can do. Very good on-paper pitcher. Just hasn't really delivered this series. Two and one. Whitney gets a piece of it. The two-two. Keep it going. He's battling. And a liner to Veranda Richards for the first out. Here's the mojo problems for Trinket. Coraline Cherry. Three RBI day. Up to four on the season. At her first triple in probably a while. High fly ball into foul territory. It had the legs, but not fair. But that one tips through. That could be a run. Bunny Bartlett's got good speed, and she will score. Four RBI game for Coraline Cherry. Brings up Mark Middleman. Looks like he'll probably finish the game. I say. I expect a bunt here. And that's a bad bunt. And a double play. The bunts have not gone well for Warren Middleman. It'll be Veranda Richards, Mark Veneman, and Turf Beal. Richards one for four with a single. Not a lot to build on here. Let's see what Middleman can do. 1-1. One, one. He's got a very effective pitch count right now. Still under 20. Whip is now under one for Middleman. He's having a breakout season here, the 24-year-old reliever. And gets the strikeout of Veranda Richards. Mark Veneman steps in. He's got a double, but does have an RBI, uh, has an RBI double, but not much else. Hitting a buck 54 on this season. Ground ball to Emmett Whitney. He makes the play. And it's two down. Down to the last out, but this is kind of the guy you want at the plate right now if you're the Cobras. Turf Beal, two for three on the day. Lines one at Atlas Roach just as I was big up in him. 
And the Krakens take their third win of the season, taking this game 10 to 4. Again, just a 12 10 hit ratio. It, uh, it really was just that Rowan Hancock went off, and so did Coraline Cherry. They combined for 9 RBI. They're an age, it's an aging team, but it's a team that I think can do a lot of things. Three hit game for Cherry, four hit game for Hancock. They're going off right now, and not really a lot to build on for the Cobras uh, in this one. Two run home run by Carson Tucker. Uh, TD Tron gets the loss. Henley sh uh, shit the win. Uh, of concern, though, for the Kraken have to be Newt Pecorino, who worked a third of an inning here, gave up five hits and four runs. Um,. Not much to build on there. His ERA is up to 21. Three stars, Hancock, Cherry, and shit. There's no other way around that, I don't think. They were definitely the three that brought it home. We'll take a quick look at the standings here. As the Kraken continue to lead the Warden Conference at 3-1, and one, tied with the Nova Cat and Hell's Horses teams. And uh, we'll have a look at the player development that we're facing. I wasn't really thinking that this spitball would be a good option, but to be honest, the way Warren Middleman's pitched, you got to like what you've seen. Um, and increasing his junk and accuracy would be nice, although a chance to gain the, uh, the BB prone is a bit of a problem there. Uh, Coraline Cherry with the back corking option as well as Swell McLean. Um, I don't think those are really uh, avenues we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be looking at, although, again... Very little to work with. This is definitely a win-now uh, team. Let's have a look at the CPU games real quick before we call it a day. Steel Vipers defeating the Nova Cats 13-6. They moved to 4-0 on the season. And the Jade Falcons defeat the Ghost Bears 11-2. First loss of the season for the Ghost Bears, and it was emphatic fashion. A lot of high scoring today as the Snow Ravens crushed the Barak. And also on the winning side of things are the Blood Spirits. They moved to 4 now. Barak versus Hell's Horses. Hell's Horses taking that one, although a late comeback from Barak. And then it is the Diamond Sharks falling to the Cloud Cobras. Ghost Bears back in the winning column. Snow Ravens fall to the uh, Goliath Scorpions. And also on the winning side of things are the Ice Hellions. 3-2 win for the uh, Fire Mandrels as well. That is their first win of the season. Wolf and Smoke Jaguar are the only winless teams. Next time around, it'll be Vinny Forrest, the ace, returning to the hill after a disappointing debut. He'll take on left-hander Lance Fair and the Blood Spirits. They're off to a great start, especially their first baseman, Mathis. Who has belted three deep balls through just four games? Interesting to see what happens there. Check of the league leaders here for a quick second. Rowan Hancock is, in fact, the man leading the way in the MVP voting. He's not actually leading the way in home runs. That is Legends Pepperonis, who's belted five all season. But his four home runs have him ranked second, and 13 RBIs leads the league. He's got the best on base percentage average and the second best slugging percentage. Top OPS as well. Uh, 10 hits to his name. Five of them are extra base hits, mostly home runs. And also he's uh, leading. He's also one of the leaders in runs scored. Interesting enough. Pitching wise, I don't think we really have much to work with here. Henley Shid is in the mix as well as Maximilian Alfar. I think those two are going to be a big part of this team uh, moving forward. So that is all for today's episode of Kerensky League Baseball. I hope you enjoyed. Remember to smack that like button, leave a comment and a like, and I will see you next time.